Mobile games usually aren't anywhere on my radar for a multitude of reasons. I mean, the main thing for me is a lack of physical buttons, you know, natively. It's one of the biggest setbacks. You know, needless to say, I was a little bit apprehensive when actually trying out Cover Fire uh, here on the Switch. Now, this is definitely a mobile game at heart, and it's on the Switch for free. But is it worth your time amongst a myriad of other gaming options? That's exactly what we're here to talk about. Danny from the Famicast here. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on those notifications. Leave us a comment down below and we may read it out on our bi-weekly show called the Famicast. Now today though, we're taking a look at the free shooter cover fire on the Switch, letting you know if it's actually worth taking a look at. Now, whether you're playing in handheld mode or docked, cover fire on the Switch requires you to use the right analog stick for aiming the on-screen reticle. Now you're able to use the touchscreen while playing the game in handheld mode, however, touches are limited to menu prompts. Now some people might want to add a little bit more touchscreen support when it comes to this type of thing, but I think this actually works fine. I think, alternatively, a gyro option would have been a nice addition. Now once you're actually thrust into the action, the, the shooting begins. Now to initiate everything that's going on on screen, you simply press either the right trigger or I believe it's A, and you use, again, that right analog stick to shoot. That's pretty much it. Now, there are a few different options with weaponry. I mean, there's an assault rifle, there's a sniper rifle, and there's also like this rocket launcher. Uh, missions can actually be cleared by simply taking out enemies, um, and each level actually offers additional challenges that will net you points and uh, different things that you need for upgrades. Now, overall, the gameplay here is actually pretty fun. Simple, yes, but enjoyable. Now, while I think that the gameplay is pretty smooth, I think an option to switch to the left stick for controlling the reticle, I think that's really needed here. Given the fact that you aren't even using the left joystick for movement, or really at all, it's just kind of an odd choice. Now, of course, this is something that maybe could be covered in a later update to the game, we'll see. But yeah, just again, just to be perfectly clear, you're not controlling the on-screen movement, you're just controlling that reticle. So yeah, they, there's definitely something that they could do with that left analog stick. Now again, with simplicity, things are kept simple here when it comes to modes. Now although the main screen of the game has quite a few options, the actual meat of potatoes comes in the form of the campaign. Now this is made up of multiple chapters with a dozen or so missions in each. You'll need to work through these to further the story as well as gain basically in-game items that you could use for upgrades. Now additionally there are a, there's a zombie mode and there's also this skirmish option. Now the zombie mode, it just puts you up against dozens and dozens of zombies that are trying to take you out. I mean, there are only a handful of these levels that you can uh, challenge whenever the uh, thing is actually going on, but yeah, you know, it's pretty fun. And skirmish, or like battle, this puts you in head-to-head -head competitions uh, with another player as you're trying to take out as many bad guys as you can in like this time limit. And yeah, that's actually pretty fun too. Um, <laughs> yeah, it can be pretty challenging if you don't know the layout of the level or where the enemies are coming from. And you know, just overall, I think all these modes, I mean, they're, they're very short and they can be finished in a, basically a minute or under, but I think it's kind of fun and easy just to jump in and out. Now, being a mobile game in nature, you will find yourself replaying many of these levels. Now, this leveling system, this kind of plays a part in this as well, as you'll need to unlock various upgrades to gain various boosts and buffs that'll help you against the increasingly difficult enemies. Now, things are pretty easy at first, but you'll either have to put the time into the game with your limited number of free plays, or throw down some real-world money to kind of fast-track things. I mean, this is very clearly a mobile port for better or worse. Now, don't let the icon <laughs> art for the game fool you. Um, things here are actually pretty simple when it comes to visuals. I mean, character models are pretty basic and the environments can be quite simple, but I think they get the job done. I mean, even with that said, the game actually runs really smoothly and I can't think of any instances graphically, you know, where I ran into any issues on that front. And there are, you know, a few wonky animations when it came to taking out some of the enemies in melee combat, especially you can maybe see on the screen right now with the zombie stuff. But yeah, I mean, aside from that, everything else was more or less fine. Now, presentation here is actually pretty good too, I think. Uh, the developers put in like this cool sniper elite-like effect that slows down uh, the final shot of the missions to show it kind of taking out the last of the enemy. That was pretty cool. Uh, the story features kind of like this comic book style with images to kind of push along this narrative and what's going on here. I, I think the audio overall is pretty decent too. I mean, I think the, the music might be a little bit generic, but I think these epic kind of tunes kind of thumping throughout the game are definitely fitting for the genre. Now, this isn't to say that everything was perfect here, so there were a handful of times where I did run into some glitches that required me to actually just completely close out the game and restart. You know, for example, on one of the earlier stages in the game, you're being taught how to take out incoming grenades from the enemies, and the action is basically 
just getting started behind the scenes, like kind of when all this stuff's going. But I found that when I press buttons too quickly to kind of go through this, the action would just kind of continue on screen with like these prompts and like all this stuff just remaining over. So I can't see what's going on. I really can't do anything. Now, other times the levels themselves just simply wouldn't start or, you know, something like that. I mean, you know, overall, this wasn't like a huge deal and it maybe only happened, I don't know, 10% of the time or something like that. But it could just get annoying, especially when you get one of your play tickets used without actually having played the mission. Now, to kind of not end here on a, a negative note, I definitely had more fun with Cover Fire than I expected. Now, is this a perfect game? No. Is this going to give you the ultimate warfare experience on the console? No, probably not. However, I think if you're actually looking for something that's easy to pick up and play and is actually fun, this is definitely worth a look. I mean, hopefully it'll get some more updates over time to kind of smooth things out, like some of these glitches and stuff, but I mean, it's free though, so I think the only thing you'll be losing out on if you don't like this game is time. Now, as always, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you like what you see, feel free to drop this video a like. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe. We've got tons of podcasts, video reviews, looks at Japanese games, and a whole lot more. Again, this is Danny from the Famicast. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later.